Hello, hello, and welcome to Community TV with Adair. This is TV for you by TV from me. This is where I speak to people in our community, businesses, and other people who are doing amazing things to help people around them. Now, this could be anything from a yoga class, physical fitness, tarot card reading, gardening, cooking, uh, skincare, anything you were interested in, I bring it to you. And uh, through Community TV with Adair, we broadcast on mytimetv.live and we also syndicate through binge networks to 50 channels of TV on demand. So welcome, welcome to today's premiere. We are not live, we are premiering and we are premiering as a live special edition. And I'd love to introduce to you special guest, Sharon Musker. I'll bring Sharon in. And I'd like to share with you that Sharon is one of Australia's foremost experts on healing and loss. Through her work as one of the most country's most sought after funeral celebrants, she's worked with thousands of individuals experiencing the realities of grief, grief and loss. As a celebrated keynote speaker, and founder of the Love in Death movement. Sharon is dedicated for uh, to sharing life lessons, transforming the fear of death and celebrating the power of love. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's Exciting. my pleasure. It's an amazing thing that you're doing. And I just, when I, when I, when we spoke and you told me that uh, about the, the movement and what you, what you wanted to do and your big goal for it, I just said, no, we need to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks for your so support. So, Sharon, what, what, now I know you've been up to some really exciting stuff recently and you've got some great stuff happening in the, in the near future. So just uh, as a, um, a celebrant, funeral celebrant and uh, starting a, a worldwide movement, I mean, that's a pretty big, a pretty big thing to do, and I'm I just am totally blown away. But just to share with us a little bit about your journey, journey that's led you to being here, sure. with all these wonderful th things that you're doing. Okay, so my background has always been my career was in PR and marketing. I worked for many, many years for a global wine company and I worked all over the world with them. Um, I, I'm based here in Adelaide, but I was um, given an opportunity, it was a dream job, and I went over to work out of their UK office, but I looked after their whole European, all the European countries hmm. for one of Australia's uh, biggest wine brands. Anyways, it was a dream job for me. I was single at the time. I was living the high life. I thought I had made it. My world yeah. was complete. I was travelling in and out of countries. And I had an accident and I had a freak Ooh. accident. And it happened actually while I was back here in Adelaide. I stepped on the tail of a stingray. It went through the bottom of my foot. And my life changed completely from that. So mm. I went from work. I was a workaholic. Self-confessed, I was mm -hmm. working hours plus a week to being laid up in bed in hospital for two years. I was off my feet and I was fighting to save the use of my foot. Did you, but I was did you say two years. two years? Yeah, I had ten operations. No. Um, on two occasions they were talking about amputation and on two occasions I nearly lost my life as well. So I'm talking this was like a serious accident had major repercussions for me. And, like, this happened two years. If you think back to Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. I know, hunter, that was the first thing that flashed into my mind yeah, was. This was fatal. And his happened almost two years to the day after mine. So, you know, in those, so two years before I had had my accident, it was almost two years later that I was back on my feet. Wow. And I heard oh. about him. And. So it was a really uh, difficult time for me and in that time what I learned was how to cope with a lot of loss because like my foot, um, I have a partial disability now in my foot so I lost, 
my life changed completely. So I lost my career. I had to give that up. Uh, I lost my financial security. I lost, um, yeah, life as I knew it. The only way for me to really get through that, I, I worked out I've got, to, I've got to do the things that I love. Mm. I thought, you know, because um, two years off your feet is a long time to sit in a hospital bed. So I took mm-hmm. up doing all the things I always wanted to do. I took up singing lessons. Well, I'm not a very good singer, but I thought I was. Um, but I, I took up knitting. I took up mosaics. I became a marriage celebrant. I always thought that would be cool to marry my friends. And and so the, all of these things actually was just filling my heart with joy and it was helping me through a really difficult time. What I can honestly say is that accident, what happened to me was the best thing that ever happened because it changed completely the course of my life. Mm-hmm. In that time, I also then met my then husband. We had two children. So you know, I was a career woman. I was never even looking at having kids and that completely changed my life and they're, they're my absolute world. Mm-hmm. During all of this time, so when I got back on my feet, I started doing a few weddings, never had any interest in doing funerals. I never even thought about that until one of my best friend's fathers passed away and she asked me, being a marriage celebrant, would I conduct the service on their behalf? I knew her father very well. And I was really unsure about it. I was very scared of doing it, but Mm. I wanted to honour him and I wanted to do it for their family. So I did this funeral and Mm. it was the most rewarding thing I ever did. And I remember... Sorry to cut across, but as a marriage celebrant, you're, you're licensed to do both. Is that the... Well, as a marriage... Like you need a license to mm. to do that for the attorney generals. Mm. As a funeral celebrant, anyone can do it. You actually don't. Oh. Need, you, you know, you really don't need an actual license. Not okay. not by the attorney general or you know, like because we, with marriages, you're dealing with the marriage it's, act. It's a, um, a legal requirement. Yes. Yeah. 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 But when mm. I did my marriage celebrancy course. I also took up some subjects in funeral celebrancy. I'm an energy healer, a Reiki master as well. There there were other things that I studied in my time that I was Mm -hmm. off my feet. And I thought it would be really good to study funeral celebrancy, more to learn a little bit more about grief and trauma because I was dealing with a lot of people through my energy healing work who were dealing with grief and trauma. So I had had that little bit of experience in it yeah. So when my yeah. friend asked me to do it, I, I went back to my notes and looked through my notes and, and all of that. And um, and the funeral director that I worked with was actually the state manager for a company, um, quite a large funeral company. And he said to me after, like, wow, we would love to put you, you know, to, to give you some work, to put you on our books, like to contract oh, wow. me. Would you be interested? And I sort of went, yeah, sure. Um, okay. Not really sure what I was saying yes to, but I, as I drove home, this overwhelming feeling came over me that I had just lived on purpose. And mm-hmm. I can't describe it any more than that. I knew in that moment I had just done what I was here to do. Um, I had never, never had a role as fulfilling as what I do now. And so fast mm-hmm. forward eight years, and I've done, I've literally worked with thousands of individuals now dealing mm-hmm. with the reality of death. It's given me such privileged insight into how people cope with grief and also with loss as well. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I can honestly say this work is, it's extraordinary work. The industry, you work with the most amazing people. You work, you know, in the industry, but you're also working with um and meeting families at their most difficult and vulnerable times in their mm. life. Yes. Um, it's yes. very difficult at times, but it's actually so rewarding to be able to help them. And I believe if I can make one difference to that family member or a difference, then I have served what I'm here to do. Yeah. I think it's an absolutely yes. incredible thing that you do. And I know that um, I'm thankful that, uh, you know, my life haven't been touched too much 
by you know sort of death you know sort of grandparents have passed and my my dad has passed as well but it's uh, uh, I think you know it's sort of in the fullness of time and but with um, I would imagine that there would be lots of different circumstances where you would have lots of different um, you know different ages and that type of thing that you would circumstances under which you know sort of people uh, people pass but I'm just thinking about how how it's been for me and my family it's uh, it's been very very traditional where you know death's not talked about and people when I think back my, my dad uh, passed away six years ago this year and I think back and I thought it would be really good to have some even some coaching or I don't know this is weird, some way what it's normal has to be able to have a conversation about death with someone who's dying and then after they've gone about so is that something that you um, that you you do you help with because I just I think there would be huge value in that because it was just not something that we spoke about. Look, what I've noticed in in the work that I've done over the years is there is so much fear that surrounds death. So that would be why you know it wasn't really talked about in your family. And look, you're not alone because most you know in a lot of cases it's like that and. So I guess, you know, for me and, and with the Love in Death movement, what I'm, what I'm wanting to do is really shift society's perception from one yeah. of fear to one of love. And it's getting people to start talking about and openly talking about it, you know, before they pass, having people, you know, prepare for, with, you know, arranging their funeral even before, but also recording their life story, you know, mm. encouraging families to sit down with their loved one yeah. And to talk about their life because what I find in a lot of cases, people don't know their loved one's life story. You know, they don't know where their parents went to school or what their mum or their dad's, you know, favourite childhood memory is. And so there's a lot of things that I'm hoping to inspire in people to, to share with them um, that. Look, you know, we, we're losing, you know, legacies and we're losing yeah. the history culture and the values within families like you look at back to the you know the native americans and aboriginal people yeah, they yeah. Are wonderful at storytelling and story showing within their own families and it passes down through the traditions but we as a western culture traditionally don't really sit down with our families we don't really share our stories with them and mm. we're losing history and you know the culture and the values within your own family so that's very much something that um, I have seen in my line of work that I've been you know encouraging people to do even if it's a matter of getting at your iPhone and asking yeah. your one a question like grandpa tell me your favorite childhood story and record them on an iPhone just something like that then you've got it forever yeah I think that's really interesting because it's only just come out. My mum's written her story and she's written it from journals that she's kept since she was 14 and it's wow. been fascinating. We actually went to the publisher the other day and she said she's got 400,000 words. <laughs> she said you've got way over two books there. Yeah. So, so she's, got a, she, she's got a legacy that she's leaving, absolutely. She's documented her life, but that would be a rare bird indeed, I would imagine. But you're so lucky to have that because you can pass that down to your kids and your grandkids and they've got that forever. Yeah. But that's yeah. phenomenal. You can write yes. down the generations when they're going to read that. Yes, yeah. I've so, read my life story. I share mine with my children now. I read it to them like it's a bedtime story. So my kids, yeah. I want them to know everything about my life and me and um you know my my achievements my hurts my everything mm -hmm. no i think it's a brilliant idea and i think to think about that beforehand and you know and you would have seen i guess so much more in terms of than than i would have seen because that's we grew up with that luckily 
that with mm. all that uh, being documented and and depending on what chapter mum's up to in her book is depending on which kid she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to we we do get to relive it quite often and i think it's you know that i don't just coming home to me how blessed we are that we're actually uh, that mum has, has sat down and done that you know from all of those the journals and the diaries that she's kept so so so, so when is that that's part of the love in death movement yeah that you, uh, yeah look what i what I also discovered, so I talked about, you know, a lot of what I see is the fear and people not being prepared. But the, but what I found most through all of my work about death is it's all about love. Mm. So when I sit with a family, I hear a person's most inner thoughts about love for their loved one who's passed. So mm. I hear the most extraordinary love stories. But you have no idea the love stories that I hear. Um, I can sit with a, um, a child who's lost their parent, no matter what age, and I hear all about their love for them. I'll sit with a parent who's lost a child at whatever age as well, and mm -hmm. I hear all about their love for that child. And, yes, I do see hearts break every single day. Yeah. But those hearts that break, it's all born out of love. Yes. And so through the work that I've done, I have learned the most extraordinary life lessons. And, and that is really what I'm so passionate about sharing with the world. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyes, most famous quote, this is my favourite one, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, and death is love. Yes. And so really what I'm wanting to do and I'm doing is creating a global movement in the way we view death. And it's literally shifting society's perception from one of fear to one of love. Yeah. And I really believe in doing that, it aids in people's healing. I've seen it in the services I do. Um, I, I shift that focus of death to one of love. And when you can start to share those love stories with people, and, and really focus on the love that, that, that they have for them, that, that aids in people's healings. And so what I'm seeing now in the Love and Death movement, um, like I've created a platform, a Facebook group for people to come in, mm -hmm. share their love stories. They share the life, they celebrate the meaning of their loved one. In that group, it's a safe environment but it aids not only in their own healing because they're able to, to get it out and to share it with people, but it's aiding in so many people, other people who are embarking on their own journey of loss. And that's what's quite, it's almost quite miraculous to see the healing that's taking place just literally by shifting that focus. So you have people who are, um, who are, members of a community and they they it's almost like uh, it's like it takes a village it takes a village to support each other to grieve and to you know express that it's okay to to be as you know however you feel and and that's that is right. that yeah that, that's what it's about and it's also a place where I'm sharing, so I'm initiating those love stories. So I share with them some of the love stories that I see every day in my line of work and mm -hmm. and some of the lessons and, you know, so people are also learning these life lessons. They're learning through loss about life. Mm -hmm. That's a really important part of it as well. But, yeah, there's people in there sharing, you know, and it could just be, they, you know, some of them share a whole story. Some just share a quote that means something to them. Yeah. Some just shares a thought. Um, it might be their loved one's birthday that day and they just want to be able to share that and, you know, in a safe environment where people mm -hmm. can come in and, and talk. The other so thing that I've also... Oh, oh sorry. No, I was just going to say, is that is that the... Um, is that because you you've got a book that's in pre-launch at the moment and I, I wanted to ask you about the life lessons that you talk about yeah. um, is that some is that 
woven into the book and yes so i've pre-launched as you said a book it's coming out very very soon um but it is available for pre-launch now so people are purchasing that through the website now and it's the seven life lessons learned through loss and so these are the seven that i see time and time and time again these lessons have literally changed my life as you know personally um, i often can sit in a service and I hear like something in a eulogy or something someone said, and it would just instantly make me start to think life in a different way, or mm. perhaps I've met with a family and I've learnt the lesson through the family when I've met with them, sharing about their loved one that's passed. These lessons are just, they are extraordinary. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I was sharing them one day with some friends, some of the lessons, and they said to me, Sharon, you cannot keep this to yourself. Like you have to share this with the world because, you know, these are extraordinary lessons. And, yeah, I, I believe it will help people look at life in a very, very different way. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's called Seven Lessons Learned? Yeah, the Seven Life Lessons Learned Through Loss. Learned through yeah. loss. From a funeral celebrant's perspective. So mm -hmm. it's weaving in. The book also really weaves in a, a, a bit about my life, my journey, how I got to where I now am mm -hmm. leading this move. But it also, within each lesson, I weave in how it changed my life. So the reader really gets to learn also about my life and the way in which it's changed my life for the yes. better. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite, a, it's quite a personal book for me as well because... You know, I'm really opening up a lot of things about me. But, mm. you know, these lessons are just, they're just too many to to not share with the world. Um, we have yeah. we do have Fiona here. Thanks for joining us, Fiona. She Hi, said, Sharon, you have such a gorgeous energy about you. She's pleased that you listened and chose to share it with the world. Oh, thank so you. We just, yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. So um, so we are pre-recording this and Theoni's just jumped in. So thanks for joining us, Theoni. If you are here for the premiere or even the replay, please feel free to help us share this movement, the Love in Death movement. I've got a little um, scrolling thing here and uh, make sure that people because we've we've all been touched by death in some way shape or form and um uh, and we will be it's it's inevitable so uh, i think this is an amazing thing that you're doing and we can you can pre-order the book uh there's website links above and there's also a link to Sharon's group. Now, what's the name of your group? Your so community. Love in Death. Death. Love in Death. Group. You just look up Love in Death. That yep. will come well, up. That we have a link just... above, so people can just click on the link, and uh, and you can go straight there and apply to join. And so, uh, yes. Yeah, so, but it's also encouraging other people. So, you who's watching this, yes. If you know of somebody that's going through, they might be going through a really difficult time or they're just, you know, we've all been affected by loss, as you've said, mm -hmm. in some way. And um, so if you know someone, feel free to invite them as well. Mm -hmm. I really, and that's how that movement, you know, you know, it, it takes off. And another one, I'm a big one for quotes, but Gandhi, he always said, in a gentle way, we shake the world. And I really believe in a gentle way, we can all aid in each other's healing. Yes. You know, by yes. sharing something like this. You know, I um, recently launched this internationally, the Love and Death Movement. The first yes. up, what I did was a video, and that video went viral, and it's the Love and Death, um, a two-minute video. Okay. Um, it's just beautiful. I, I'm really proud of it. And it touched. I saw that video. It is, it is an absolute, it is an amazing video. It is really yeah, nice. You so can the see only that. Wants the book, the only, there's a link above oh, the website. Yeah. Jump on the website and pre order your copy. So, 
Thank and so, so tell us about launching the Love and Death Movement internationally. Yeah. That's quite exciting. So we did it first. I did it through an organisation who really helped just push it out through social media. We've got to love social media. Mm -hmm. And that's where mm -hmm. that video really just started to create a little ripple effect. Mm -hmm. I was getting contacted by people all over the world, people from professors from universities contacting me, you know, in America saying, Sharon, mm -hmm. this is phenomenal because up until now the only resource we've had is the five stages of grief and it's good to know that you are leading the way in looking at it through the eyes of love. And then there was hospices overseas contacting me saying, how can we collaborate and how can we work with you and how can we, we in turn then work with the, like the people that we work with in sharing the love in death, you know, preparing yeah. them. I've had many people reach out about, you know, working with them as they prepare for their death as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, taken, it's actually starting to now take on a whole life of its own. Mm -hmm. And that someone only said this to me yesterday, you know, that is when you know you're on purpose or when you're yeah. doing your calling because it's not really about me. And I've always said this message is nothing to do with me. It, I'm merely a messenger in this. This is yeah. so much bigger than me. I've just, I have listened to a message and some guidance and I'm just now sharing it with the world because I really yeah. feel that I can help people. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, the launch? Yeah. And then recently, I um, only one week ago, I returned from Las Vegas mm. where I launched oh. this in Las Vegas. So I was invited to speak as one of their speakers. Mm -hmm. at the Women's Global Empowerment Conference. It was launched, it was their inaugural conference in Las Vegas. They're now rolling this out all around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I launched the Love and Death Movement there, which was well, so exciting. It's extremely exciting and it's so, um, it actually, yeah, I think it's, it was perfect. And you've got another conference coming up, I believe. Yes, so I was recently named as a female, the female thought leader for 2019 in Y Magazine, which is an incredible um, entrepreneurial magazine, predominantly mm -hmm. for women in business. And, you know, I was just so thrilled to have been invited and asked um, to be a, a thought leader. But it was really in, in the industry that I'm in, in and it's in changing the way we're looking at death. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I forget that we're in the love industry. I'm not in the, the death industry at all. So mm. with that, they've, they've got their annual conference on the Gold Coast late September. And so they've asked me to be one of their keynote speakers there to really well, share. That and awesome. Move. Yeah. I'll be up there in September. I might just have a ticky tour to the Gold Coast and come and oh, see you. <laughs> yes. So, so there's incredible things happening. I'm working on, uh, and it will be released very shortly, a workbook mm -hmm. in Turning Lost into Love. And I'm very excited about that. I believe, again, through the use of social media, this can get into the hands of so many people and just help yes. them through their journey of loss. Yes. Well, I can see this becoming because people, that they're, they're looking for alternatives. So, you know, the way things are, the way things have been, don't seem to be working that well anymore and you're... you're yeah. Your voice or your message is really a breath of fresh air in the wilderness. So I can see it. And I'm grateful that we're able to connect here and be um, a small part of that journey for you. And help. I really am. Thank you. So, you know, it's uh, it really is exciting. Pardon? Yeah, you guys are amazing at what you do and supporting people, supporting businesses, supporting movements. You know, it's, it's extraordinary. And, uh, you know, we can't get our messages out to the world. Well, that's it. We're just talking about that tonight in a different forum and it was, uh, it really is quite exciting. And uh, so we we will continue to do what we do because this is, give, it does give uh, businesses and, and people a, a voice to be able to, 
you know, sort of at a really local level to get the word out. So yeah. we will, uh, we've, we're out of time, but what, you know, um, I did brief you about the heart. <laughs> so now I've got to figure this out. Um, let me just turn no off. No pressure. And <laughs> now I've just got to, I feel like a, a what, do you, what do you call it? Um, um, fly eyes and octopus, octopus arms with this. <laughs> do a tap dance while you're doing it or something <laughs> all right now, now can you see the heart there now i've got yes. to work out which way to move all right so we just so we look at the camera and we smile for five minutes five minutes five, <laughs> five seconds and beautiful thank you so much for that and i will pop that back off and Sharon, thank you so much for joining us uh, on Community TV with Adair. Really, really appreciate you and appreciate the message that you're bringing to the world in the love and death movement. I will encourage anybody, everybody to make sure that you can help get the message out as far and wide as you possibly can. And also there is a link above here to join the community or pre-ordered the book uh, from the website and now there was three things now the community the book and oh maybe there was two yeah that's it that's it ah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us everybody i'm adair palmer this is community tv with adair we're on my time tv dot live and we're broadcast out through binge networks to 50 channels of TV on demand. Bye for now. Bye.